Hello everyone, Joshua Jones here with GLHF MTG, and I'm here for a Commander Deck Tech today. Uh, but before we jump into it, I wanted to talk real quick about a quick channel update. So, um, between JB Ladd and Jordan Brown and John Hell and myself, Joshua Jones, um, I'm not sure who all is going to uh, continue making videos for the channel because when I started this channel, I was in Florida and in a really good space, really into magic, and I wanted to do this thing with my buddies um, and since then I moved to Kansas so I had to kind of refine myself with where I was at with um, magic and you know get settled in over here and um, I think I just wanted to take a step back to why I wanted to make videos in the first place which is just to take commander deck texts that I was already making and then just share them for anybody who wanted to to see them and I, I want to get back to those roots and just make commander deck texts because that's what I enjoy the most so I'm not a uh, hundred percent you know on on the schedule or anything like that but i wanted to get this one out there so that we can get back to it and see where we end up so maybe not a lot of other stuff going on besides commander deck text now and then but hey that's that's what i enjoy so we'll get to it but before we can do that i want to close out shop on the giveaway from when we were trying out the packs um so the packs giveaway i said i would give away six packs so i randomly uh, chose the winner from all the people that left the comment. I thought it was going to be Cardboard Badger because Cardboard Badger was uh, leaving all kinds of comments. I appreciate that. I appreciate everyone that watched the videos, but it ended up being uh, Mitchell Pennington. Um, so, uh, who you know, who, whoever you are out there, Mitchell, um, get a hold of me at the the website or leave a comment. Find out how we can get in touch with one another. I owe you six packs, so uh, I don't. I don't actually have any rivals of packs. Those are those are all gone. But if you want rivals, I can I can send you those, or just let me know, and I'll send you whatever you want, buddy. Uh, thanks so much. You know, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna keep doing those packs things. I didn't really. I appreciate everyone's support, but I didn't really like um, how much time was spent on those versus like how much uh, viewership was going on. Um, I think that the viewership's more into Commander Deck Text than anything else, and that's where my heart is. So that's where we're gonna go. Enough about all that stuff. We'll jump right into it here so today we're here for dominaria legends so we have ariel knight of wind grace it's a uh, orzhov colors black white so it's two black white for a four four with vigilance it's a human knight and for two and a white tap you can create a two two white knight creature token with vigilance and for one in tap tap x untap knight you control destroy target creature with power x or less so both a token generator in also, um, a removal spell on a stick, 4-4 four, four Vigilance for 4 is not bad either, and it allows us to play Black White Night Tribal, so that's awesome. Um, one thing I'll say about this abilities here is, is that um, you can't activate either one of these when Ariel has uh, Summoning Sickness, but you can tap the untapped Knights you control that have Summoning Sickness, because the... Um, ability isn't on those knights. So if you have a 2 2 that you just created with Ariel, and for some reason uh, Ariel's untapped again, and that uh, knight still has uh, summoning sickness, you could tap it to Ariel's second ability. I hope all that made sense. But basically, yeah, okay, let's move on. <laughs> so the first uh, thing we're going to get into here is the actual knights. So I put uh, 20 knights in here, uh, 21 if you include the commander, but uh, the first couple knights here are Pintark Paladin and Bona Butcher of Magan. So both of these are just reasonable knights that offer some removal like built in. So with the uh, Vona, you get a pay 7 life, tap pay 7 life and destroy a target non-land permanent and you can only um, activate this ability during your turn, so like a sorcery speed type of thing. Um, well, actually, like you could do it at instant speed, but it has to be your turn, so that's important to note, I guess. Um, and then the Paladin here is a two, double white tap, destroy target permanent of the chosen color. Like, and when it ETBs, you have to um, choose whatever color that's going to be. So, all right, that's why they're in here, you know, so let's move on. Here we have some knights that do some static buffs so like in the case of the vindicator here you have to level it up to give it plus one plus one but if you level it up enough you can get the plus two plus two boost and then with the exemplar uh, other knights are going to get a bust of plus one plus one bust boost whatever you know what i'm saying a plus one plus one indestructible and then just with the marshal here is that all other creatures you control um get plus one plus one so 
just bust up, uh, boost up the team. I keep saying bust. It's awesome. All right, here we go with some more knights. So we have the Cavalier, another Paladin, and Lancers here. So Lancers is going to let you tutor up a legendary card. So it's important to note that that's a legendary card. We're not playing any Planeswalkers in this deck, but if you like wanted to add in your own Planeswalkers or switch some things up, you know, all, by all means, you know, awesome. Um, and you can search for any legendary. So that's important to note. And then uh, with the Paladin here, whenever it does combat damage, you exile target black or red permanent that player controls. And the Cavalier here is... Cav Cavalier? Cavalier. Whatever it's called. This other guy is going to uh, give double strike to your team. So, well, uh, your knights, but they're uh, very... All the creatures in here that aren't knights aren't meant to attack. Um, here we have the Black Rose, which uh, allows you to become the Monarch when it uh, ETBs. So, like a little source of extra card draw. And then, in case people are coming after you to be the uh, become the Monarch um, so that they can draw at the end of their turn... Um, if you can do a little lose two gain two situation for that, then we have the blade hold, which is has battle cry, and also when it attacks, you put two one one white soldiers into play that are tapped and attacking. So um, those uh, tokens don't get exiled or anything; they just come in. So if they survive combat, you're gonna keep them. And then we have other ways to manipulate those tokens in the deck with that Jasu vest here. Like it's just a four or five for four. It you know, and then if you kick it for six. You get uh, something like, uh, I don't know, what is it here? Eight to two black menace tokens. That's ridiculous. So it'd be kind of cool to see this in a mono black, and it might pick up some steam in, in standard. We'll see. I don't, I'm, I'm not really sure. So, And then with the obligation here, it has extort. That's why I included it in the deck. So I think extort is just a cool mechanic in Orzhov in general because, I mean, it is an Orzhov mechanic. So, um, you know, just to be able to, whenever you cast a spell, to pay any extra mana you have to have everybody lose one and then gain equal to the total uh, life that's lost is a pretty awesome deal. Uh, here we have the Dauntless Bodyguard. So what this does is when it ETBs, it allows you to choose another creature, and then it kind of gives you like a selfless spirit type of effect, but just for the one creature that you chose. But other than that, it's a 2-1 knight for one mana so this card's just all upside in, in my opinion um knight of grace and knight of malice like they're not the most powerful knights in the world but i felt like it was important to include them in this deck because it's just like the straight flavor of the whole thing you get bears right two 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 for twos on both of them they both have first strike so they're like even better than bears and then they like they get bigger if you control white permanent or black permanent uh, important to note on this is that um lands don't actually count for that so like if you play like a on turn one you play a planes or something in turn two you play a swamp and then you play one of these two you don't actually control a permanent of the other color yet because lands are colorless if i'm wrong I, i'm pretty sure that's the case so if i'm wrong about that just eat me up in the comments but i'm I think that's the case. And then just to have Hexproof from one specific color, I think is nifty because um, I believe that's what we're going to be seeing going forward instead of uh, Protection because Protection is like kind of confusing. And I think they're just going to switch to a Hexproof of a color to make it easier for us all to follow. Um, you know, it'll, the blocking thing will kind of get phased out, I guess. But moving on to Knight of the White Orchid here, it's pretty cool. Even though like it's double white, um, shouldn't be a problem in this deck and it's has first strike but also too like if you're a land behind it gets you get you a land out of your deck onto the battlefield so that's pretty pretty cool and then you see here that it also says here that when you search for a plane it's, it's, it's got to be a plane so it's not just any land but um when you put it onto the battlefield it's not going to be tapped it's just a ready to use right away so that's cool uh here we have a pretty cool little uh like a northeast southwest thing going on with these paladins because they're all like pretty much identical they're three three threes for four mana double in each of the respective colors and you could pay double their uh double of their respecting casting costs so like double white or double black double white double black and tap them to destroy a creature of like the opposite type of thing so like with the north you get a tap to destroy a black with the west you get to destroy a white and with the the south and west, the uh, red and green permanent. So it's just like, I don't know, how can I not like include these in the deck? Uh, blue is like the only one getting away with murder, but I don't know, just flavorful. If you if you wanted to like put in four other knights, I wouldn't hate on you. I just, you know, you're you're losing out on this flavor situation right here. So and then like so that's it for the knights. So here's what the great part about this deck that I like a lot is is that um. 
it's not like it's not op or anything it's just a lot of fun like a lot of flavorful you know real flavorful deck so far right so for the rest of this deck tech what's awesome is is that we just went through uh 20 nights and then the commander says so 21 cards there's uh let's do math come on uh, 79 other cards there's 79 other cards in this deck and these 79 cards can like pretty much go in almost any semi creature based or Zob deck like they're just strong staples like um, some of the cards won't work so well if you want to do some wars off things that aren't creature based but the cards work really well like if you know and you, they're easy to replace out so pretty much like the rest of these cards the, the entire land base all the ramp all the removal all the card draw even the utility cards can go in any black white deck so like if you wanted to pick another black white commander you can get like 20 cards that kind of gel well with whatever that commander is trying to do and end up having a completely different commander deck if and if you sleeve it in the same style sleeves you're like 21 cards away from a whole nother deck anyways i'll quit ranting and i'll get right in into these ramp cards here so astronauts altered because we're running tokens right so like we want a way to sack uh tokens for different reasons um and we want to be able to just get colors mana and we're going to have excess tokens sometimes so a lot of times with the ability being that it's going to cost three mana to uh, generate a token from our commander it's not going to be like an up uh, net gain because you only get the two colorless back and you spent two colorless and a white to get the token but um sometimes you just need to sack it you know like or you'll have it around and you've gotten some use out of it and maybe you got a skull clamp on it or something and you want to get rid of it and then you can do it that way so excuse me my dog's just going ham right now there's no way to get around this he's just going to be going crazy for a minute give me a second here all right yeah all right we're back at it sorry about that i don't I really have like a lot of editing material so we just got to run through this here uh anyway so sort of the animus here is like um, pretty cool because like Orzov's kind of weak for ramping, um, but it does have this artifact centric um, flavor access like every other deck has with the artifacts wise. So um, we use sort of the animus here because we're gonna have creatures and when they attack they can get us lands. So I I want to steer to a little bit toward having artifacts that get us lands into play over artifacts that just sit out and generate vantage. So I kind of like split it up a little bit. That's why these are the two head front cards on the uh, ramp slide so now we gotta of course like uh now i said that we go straight into the cards i give you no other advantage right? so we have soul ring which is you know soul ring just gotta have it felwar stone which lets you tap for like your opponent's color so like you know it, worst case you get like a color that you don't need and you just use it as colorless but you know if somebody's playing black or white you're set right then we have Orzhov Signet, which, you know, isn't going to be able to tap on its own, but gets you the black-white thing. So, like, usually what I'll do is I'll just tuck that under um, a colorless land, or I'll tuck it under, like, a white, and then just every time I'll just know to tap them both uh, for both colors. And then Commander Sphere, which gives you some value later on because you could draw a card from it. And then uh, Mind Stone, uh, again, because the being able to draw cards from it. Uh, the reason why I have a uh, sad robot in here is because sad robots, you know, it's awesome. You get a two-two body for four mana that gets you a land out of your deck and then replaces itself when it dies. Play it in commander decks. Why not? Uh, Hedron Archive is just a like the you know the twice twice over on the Mind Stone. You know, instead of two mana, it's four mana. Instead of tapping for one mana, it's tapping for two mana. Instead of paying one and drawing a card, you pay two and draw two cards. It's basically like its brother. Uh, and then the even bigger sibling is the Hedron Archive or blah, blah, the uh, Dreamstone Archive or Dreamstone Hedron. Hedron Dreamstone. You know what I'm talking about. It's six mana. It does the same thing. We're not playing that, though. And then Burner's Heart in the deck because even though like it's expensive, it does give you a 2-2. Two -two, and then hopefully you're able to activate its ability to get two lands into play. You know, because um, that's that's why it's in here. And we'll move on to the card draw. So for Rexian Arena, just because it's just boss, right? Like lose a life and draw a card on your upkeep. You know, that's just straight value town for three mana. Mentor the Meek because... Um, it doesn't say non-token. <laughs> just says that whenever another creature with power two or less ETBs in the knights you're going to make uh, at their base, if they're not being pumped, are going to come in as two twos. And then if you have an extra mana, boom, pump it in there and draw a card. It's just a good, good solid value. Um, basically, if you don't have any static pumps on the field, it's plain old uh, pay uh, three and a white to get a two two with vigilance and draw a card. It's good, good stuff. 
Here we got a skull clamp because we're running tokens. Even though the tokens are 2 2, we do have like, you know, we're going to be pushing them in there with vigilance to attack. So if they die, we get to draw two cards. We have ways to sack them, at least one way. And then, um, you know, like if they just die from any other ways, then we're going to be able to draw the cards. You can't pass it up. Uh, we have Vanquisher's Banner because we are running the 20. Uh, knights, so they're gonna give a, a boost, little Nambo with skull clamp, unless you're sacking them. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, and uh, they're gonna allow us when we cast them to draw a card straight off the bat. So, uh, read the bones and Damnable back because it just you, like you want to uh, have read the bones for when you want to like scry deep and then draw two and, and lose two. It's a typical black card, so it replaces itself, but it digs you a little bit deeper. And Damnable pack I, I like to use because you get a draw X cards and lose x life that's what black's good at but th this also helps too like if your opponent's like real short on life and you just need to push them out of the game you could also have that option available to you uh here we have altars reap and Orgos bluff Flask and costly plunderer and skeleton scrying so these are like our instant ways to draw cards since we do have tokens um altars reap and costly plunder i th i think make the cut because instant speed card draws important right because it gives you it allows you to be able to uh leave up your mana to react if you want to have that mana up to use the tap ability on your commander either one of the two and then also too if you decide not to do it and you have like a spare token laying around you could chomp and before damage um uh, draw some cards off of it and then uh skeleton scrying uh because it's instant speed and um drawing x cards at instant speed by being able to get rid of the cards that are in your graveyard we don't, we don't use any kind of recursion in this deck so the cards that are in the graveyard are dead unless we draw this uh scrying card and then uh argyle's blood fast here because i went with this over Erebos because of the flip side so um you get a chance to set creatures to gain life equal to their toughness um, if you get down to, to five life or less when it flips. And then, you know, other than that, it's just a straight up greed. I think greed might be only one mana, but you, you get my point here. Here we move on to our removal suite. So we have the, like, straight up best removal in the game, in my opinion, in the Orzhov colors. And we start that off with Vindicate and Mortify. Just an example of how three mana at instant and sorcerer speed, respectively, you can get rid of any permanent you want or a creature or an enchantment. Orzhov is, is great when it comes to removal, and these two spells are no substitute. Uh, here we have Swords and Path, because we're wearing white, and then we have Utter and in English I'm making. So just straight up, value, like, I mean, I can't say enough about this color scheme's ability to get rid of uh, target removal. So those are our six uh, target removal spells, and then we finish it off with four removal spells that are... Uh, board wide so um, all these are at sorcery speed the reason why i went with the garrick's wake and plague wind at, um, at nine mana is because they don't get rid of your stuff but they get rid of your opponent's stuff and that's important because we are you know like to we are going to be building up some tokens and we're more creature based so and then i went with merciless eviction in a steer command for even though it's at six mana just for a little bit of a um, optional uh, removal right so we get to choose artifacts or enchantments creatures plans we get to choose and and that's always good to have that kind of utility on the uh the modal spells uh here we move into the utility so this utility includes like the ways that we're going to win the game so we have authority of the consoles which uh makes creatures your opponent control and are tapped and it gives you a little bit of extra life gain like we're looking for we're not like centered around life gain but we're looking for a little bit of life gain in this deck uh, to help us out. So Aetherflex Reservoir, I just really like this card in the deck taking up a slot because it allows you to gain life whenever you cast a spell and then that like number grows like uh, storm wise, uh, like a storm count wise, and then you can pay 50 life to deal 50. And um, you know, like I don't think you, this deck has the means to get up to like 200 life or 400 life or whatever, like, like ridiculous to win with this card, but just to have it like gaining you life and then if you do happen to get up to like 51 or something and there's one troublesome opponent left you can you can nail them with this thing and then um, authority is just a solid card that kind of they, those two kind of match up together so these four cards are all about um um you know the, the life gain death um kind of uh i can't think of the name of it right now but that kind of like synergy where you know things die things come in things go out and they gain your life and lose your life so soul warden gets you something whenever a creature etbs so you got to pay attention to that because it's your other opponent yours doesn't matter if a creature etbs period you're gaining a life sutra priest is the same exact thing 
but it makes uh, you may have opponents lose life, and then you may gain life. So you actually have to pay attention to these cards. And then Blood Artist and Zulabort Cutthroat are getting them coming out. So Soul Warden, Zutra Preacher to get them coming to gain life coming in, and Cutthroat and Blood Artist are to um, do the life point swings uh, drains when they're going out. And then finally, we have Revel and Riches and Approach of the Second Sun as like alternate win conditions, just because one says you win the game on it, and the other one says, oh yeah, you win the game on it. I like Revel and Riches because it, I, do I think it's going to win you the game every time? No. But a lot of creatures die, and it gives you those treasures, and you could use those treasures to ramp out pretty hard. So like, it serves more than just an alternate win con. I went with this over Test of Endurance, because Test of Endurance is just a straight alternate win condition, and I wanted to be able to do something besides have an alternate win condition. The same thing for Approach of the Second Sun. Like, if you if you get it countered the second time that you play it, or the first time you play it, or whatever, like, okay, so you got it countered. But if, like, if you do get it off once, you're going to gain 7 life. So, gaining 7 life for 7 mana is not great, but to have it extra alternate win condition to add it onto it's good. Um, Squizzy Blood... <clears throat> Excuse me, and the Sanguine Bond combo is just basically if you can have both of these on the battlefield at the same time, the next time that you gain any life at all, the game's over. Um, because you'll gain the life, your opponents will lose the life, the other, the um, you you um, gain in the life, they lose the life. I've, let me find a more articulate way to like explain this combo. So whenever you, you'll gain life from gain in life however that happens maybe it's just reservoir maybe your creature enters the battlefield you got something with lifeling i don't know maybe you cast approach with the second sun and then sanguine bond will trigger for your opponent to lose as much life as you just gained and then exquisite blood will trigger for you when they lose life for you to gain life which triggers the sanguine bond which triggers the exquisite blood yep all right moving on so we have uh, three protection spells in the deck to round it out. We're running a uh, Whisper Silk Cloak, Swift Foot Boots, Lightning Greaves. The uh, Shroud on Lightning Greaves and Whisper Silk Cloak doesn't really come up because we're not really doing any kind of targets of our own spells with anything. Um, so, like, you know, no, no downside there that I can think of. Um, you don't really care about the unblockable so much on the Whisper Silk Cloak. I just wanted three hard spells to put on our commander to protect our uh, ability to use the commander's ability so uh, yeah so that's why that's in there and then the deck runs six swamp seven planes and then the rest of the uh dual lands are lands like vault of the archangel here which uh gives you death touch lifelink um uh, for four mana and then of course westville abbey because we got tokens going on so trying to get the ormond all in there it's too good to pass up and then we got some extras so you're gonna want to get two two vigilant knight white uh, tokens for this deck because that's what your commander creates so you're not going to want to be the guy to show up and not have these I would recommend having four because um, I, you don't have anything that gives them haste but what you could do if you have four is is that you could have um, one to represent that they because they have vigilance but they also want to tap for the abilities on the commander so you'll have one that's up and down and then one that's this way and uh, tapped, and then like you just can just put move dice to whatever side you have for how many are tapped or how many are currently untapped, and then keep track of it that way. And then, um, you know, you can then that'll be good like that. So, this is an Orzov deck. So, like, if you wanted to really rock it out for some extras, you could pick up these uh, Ultra Pro WotC like sponsor. I'm not sponsored by them at all, by the way, but I just think like if you really wanted to go really deep into the Orzhov mechanic you can pick up this play mat and sleeves and deck box and like just really dig into what it means to be you know black white so um also too like uh so i would definitely have the two two night vigilance tokens you know use a play mat use sleeves use a deck box but extras wise the deck uh plays treasures it plays one one black white uh knights it plays the um two two menace do uh zombie knights and it plays the uh one one um the soldier dudes so, uh, and then the monarch token and the treasure tokens these this slide contains all the tokens that you need for the deck and then you can pick up a cool sriracha life pad if you want to track your life pad on that and then also i like the idea of picking up some black white negative one and plus one counters because there's some negative one and plus one synergies in the deck and then all these extras will be like everything that you need to just rock this deck out the right way 
All right, this deck's going to be on MTG Goldfish 1045681. Congratulations, MTG Goldfish and the community, too, for getting over a million decks on that channel. That's a pretty cool thing. And uh, right now, this deck will cost you anywhere between around 110 to 140 bucks, um, somewhere in that price range. So, like, you know, uh, I mean, like, at the very most, even including, you know, two of each of the tokens, um, this deck will cost you $140. And then, like, if you shop around, you can get it for as low as 110 bucks. So, that's Aerial Knight of Wind Grace. Uh, it seems like a pretty cool com commander, and it's very flavorful. You know, it's not OP or anything. And, and, you know, I like it. I dig it. So, I'm happy to be back doing deck techs for you. So, rolling into some credits here, I just want to throw out a props to my boy John Hill because um, he provided this GLHF logo that we're going with now and um you know it's just I like the logo a lot and, and I appreciate I'm making it worse. Uh MTG Goldfish because that's where I make all my decks. I use a EDH rec and um scryfall to look up cards and I put the deck list on to MTG Goldfish. Um and I use a PowerPoint and um uh what is this thing called? Uh whatever this is uh, QuickTime to like record these videos. And then uh, get all the prices from TCG Player. So um, all these all these cards are a product of Wizards of the Coast. Um, you could find them at magic.wizards.com. You can find more information on Commander there and everything like that. So all this, uh, the game itself is is from them. In case you didn't know, in case you're just watching a Commander Deck Tech and you have no idea what the company is, it's Wizards of the Coast. So props to them and all their uh, the hired artists they did for all the card art and. In this video, um, you can find me at fnamtg at gmail.com. So we'll wrap it up with that. Um, uh, Mitchell Pennington, um, if you're out there, hit me up because I owe you six packs, buddy. Thanks so much. I'm glad to be back, and I hope to see you again soon. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Bye.